Hi, and welcome to this very special State of Search Tools Week presentation demo. Today, we are looking at Linkdex, one of the SEO tools who are presenting their the tools on State of Search in the special tools week. You can find more of that on stateofsearch.com slash tools. But today we are, as said, talking to Linkdex and uh, one of the founders of Linkdex, it's his baby, Matt Roberts, is gonna present all about Linkdex. So without further ado, here is Matt Roberts. Matt, can you tell us something about the idea behind Linkdex to start off with and then go ahead and talk about all the good stuff that Linkdex can give us? I mean, that was thinking that in 2013 and 2014, your tool is going to have to be very integrated. So where our heritage is very much search and the way that the content marketing has grown social and, and that integration with the PR place uh, um, is, is, a, is a key part of how we think and where we're investing our technology. And our, and our thing is really it's, it's available in the platform all in one place. Um, so inter internally and externally, we describe ourselves as as a, as a data company. So we use big data, uh, and the and the media we're interested in is particularly the earned media. I know that's a phrase that um, lots of people are familiar with. So that incorporates things like search and social and, and content marketing. And the way we the way we sort of look at this is the 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 inputs into the sort of the, the big big data mix we're interested in is is really about how value is created. So we care a lot about value and and growing. Um, growing revenues and, and helping people understand value on the web. So we look at things like keyword demand and value and the authority of publishers and authors and sharers and architecture and all how all of these things sort of integrate in a in a sort of very comprehensive way uh, to form the bigger whole. So you know a, a bit of a marketing phrase, but I think it describes what we do. Um, in a, in a good way, we would see ourselves as a media catalyst by introducing data sources like contacts with authors, with linked data, with, with ranking data, analysis data, tasks, and all these things. And we, we pour all of this into the sort of the big engine and uh, we, we try and uh, generate insights. So we, we'd like you to be able to create a to do from, from as many data points inside the platform as possible. So the kind of clients we work for are, are the big brands um, and, and big agencies and even PR companies are, are finding great benefit from using the platform. Um, so a real cross-section of, of, of people are our customers. I think that one of the other unique things about us is that we, every Tuesday, every two weeks with, with something else happening tomorrow, so Tuesday, one of those Tuesdays is tomorrow, we, we release new features, new functionality, both client-driven and, and roadmap innovation-driven. Um, so our clients really do see change on the platform. It's not, it's not a sort of relatively static beast where you might have four releases a year you literally do get 26 releases a year and I think I think that pace surprises many but today we're limited in time so rather than show you about everything that we do uh, I thought it'd be really cool to sort of um, tell you about our clients favorite bits so I get the privilege of traveling the world to talk to our customers about where their businesses are going whether they're a brand doing it in-house or an agency uh, servicing clients and they, they get to tell me what they what they like, what they want and what they need our technology to do. So I, I thought I'd highlight a few bits of the platform that I think um, I think both tell the story of who we are and where we're going, but also sort of maybe sort of help people um, sort of understand what category of tool we fit into as this is tool week um, and there'll be a lot of tools on the show. So First thing is about measuring search visibility and reporting on value. So we we spent a lot of time sort of developing how we do this. So for any market, we can tell you who's winning or losing, and that not just across the whole market. We we can do that by isolated keyword groups, and we can plot this change through time, and we can tell you how much winning is worth. And I think this is a big deal for people, particularly in an industry where sometimes investments in in search and social are are maybe. Um, suboptimal. So understanding what winning looks like, understanding who the winners are, and understanding where opportunity is um, helps people shape budget and investment. And I think I think that's a big a big deal for search because I think we can do a lot more to sort of grow budgets and and grow investment in this in this what is a huge channel. So um, yeah, keyword value and, and market value and uh, across niches and markets. 
The other one is sort of understanding pages, and I was, I've talked to people quite a lot about this, especially the content marketing clients amongst ours, about how much, not just is how much our keywords worth and by tag group or by um, by a whole sort of universe of keywords, but how much is a page worth? And I think these are really these are really interesting metrics where you can actually say for this page that I'm ranking that is ranking well, or for a page that I haven't built yet that I'd like to build, what is the opportunity of that page? And uh, we did quite a lot of work to actually explore what what that is in both if I was to rank number one and forecasting as well as applying um, in traffic, but also applying uh, monetary value to opportunities. So um, we use quite a lot of um, metrics that revolve around a paid search equivalency of natural search traffic. And our clients are really getting a lot of benefit from sort of taking not just the keyword view, but the page view of, of performance metrics. The other thing that we did um, last summer was was give our clients access to um, geo ranking data. So I think the industry's had a, a problem with ranking data for a long time because we know that the location of the searcher plays such a big part for so many keyword groups. So we introduced the functionality that for any town, city, or or zip code, that you're able to check how you perform and compare those those configurations side by side. So it's really easy within the platform to set up a new a new territory that you want to check performance for, and then we benchmark that against other territories. It can show you geo variance across different locations, show you which pages are ranking across different locations, amongst other metrics. And I think this really helps shape both lo local search strategies, which obviously are a, a big deal um, for people who have other physical properties like retailers or, or franchises, or whether they just have greater coverage to understand how you how you perform in those different areas. It's a real sort of building block for strategy. So that's that's used extensively by our, by our clients. Overlaying ranking data is one thing, but underlaying sort of value data and integrating um, traffic and conversion data is also really important. So whether that's sort of three-click Google Analytics integration or whether that's enterprise integration, we, we do that. Um, smarter decisions on content and architecture. So obviously, Websites are managing the property you've got and exploiting the the equity that exists within domains is, is, is an important task that all, all search people have to do. So we we do something interesting. So we, we do crawl websites and we crawl them in, in a very flat way, getting the most important pages as we crawl through. But then we try and provide more details about those pages. So yes, we do diagnostics for things like issues, things that might be broken. But we also overlay um, traffic data, link data, backlink data, um, keyword reach, and other, and other ranking data, and other metrics against a site crawl. Uh, and we find that this tells great stories about pages. So what is possible within the platform when we talk about integrated data is you could go from our rank tracking page and you see the little eye icon that's next to a URL and you could click on a ranking page and that could be your competitor's ranking page or, or your own ranking page and you could start to sort of explore that data a little further. You know, well, why is this page ranking or why is this page um, not ranking so well? So we would look at, in our, inside our content um, area, we'd look at pages and we'd allow you to search for pages um, using a search engine that sits above a crawl. So if you wanted to find um, all of your pages on a certain keyword topic, we'd find those using things like in title, in URL, in folder, in heading, uh, in page, and uh, amongst others. We'd find those pages for you, or you could look at one page at a time. We'd tell you about the health of those pages. We'll show you about the internal links and the external links and the anchors pointing at those pages and the counts. We can even find authors on pages. Um, so if you want to find who are, who are the authors publishing this content, we can do that. We can tell you about keywords, we can tell you about analytics, so we can tell you about value, all at all at individual page level. Um, sort of really sort of exploring that and where you can then create tasks based on what you should then be doing, whether that's ah, I understand that it has low traffic, but actually it doesn't have very many internal links or backlinks, and maybe the to do is 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 create more of those. But with that sort of whole integrated data piece, you can also do other interesting things. So these are a couple of scatter diagrams that we do that um, our clients quite like actually. So these are looking at internal architecture, which is the blue line, uh, and the shape of internal architecture amongst winners in a sector and the people competing. And then you can look at where the backlinks come inside that architecture. So the red dots in this on these are showing the top one showing um, where the deep linking strategy is is light, 
um, in, in one sector. So they have lots of links at sort of the head of the site, sort of category pages and home page, etc. Uh, but actually the other, their competitor who's doing really well actually has also has a lot of links at the head, but actually they have a lot of links throughout the whole architecture. So little insights like that really help shape strategy and what we do. Um, and I think if you're trying to explain to a client why you need to invest more in outreach to deeper pages or build better content, or it's, it's that kind of illustration that really helps. Another big part of the sort of the LinkedIn story is obviously where we came to the market first, uh, sort of maybe two, three years ago with link data, but that's extended into sort of authors and social networks. So let me tell you a bit more about that. So. The big thing for us is we've always had this ability to recrawl uh, link data sources like Majestic SEO, which obviously has the biggest um, link map in the world. It's probably the, the most rapidly refreshed. But our, what we did with that kind of data source is we went to the source code and recrawled it. And we do this for our clients at a speed of about 500 pages a second. We, we recrawl this looking at the source code. The first thing that we did with that ability to recall source code was go, oh, that's a blog and that's a news site, that's a directory, which we and that was those sort of slides of site type are used in in lots of presentations that I see about the place. Um, the other benefit of that was obviously clean data, but the sort of the more recent benefit of that is is author data. So, author, as we know, you've covered it a lot on state of search, is is a big deal, um, and actually before it was a big deal on all of the search press and it was actually something we'd launched before that became big news. It's something we've been working on for over 12 months and um, it was something we knew or thought very strongly that the market was going to need at some point to get beyond list of domains towards people. So publishers as we know are adopting it and writers are adopting it and it's becoming it's becoming a core part of the search landscape and search engine results are certainly as we know impacted by it at the moment so you can see sites like the New York Times using REL Publisher and, and all their journalists publishing under their, their, their G plus profiles and using uh, Red Author. So what people, what our clients use LinkedIn for is to find influential and passionate authors on any topic really fast. And actually, we're at the point now where actually we're we're confident that we have the largest commercially available database of uniquely profiled authors in the world. So this is something I put together yesterday, and we looked at the UK mobile phone market, and within no time at all, we actually found that over 25,000 authors in this space, and we're able to pick out authors that, for example, write about this market in a re in in a in a in a way that would display them as being really passionate about the topic and relatively neutral about what they do. So like I've highlighted here, this um, Carly Page here, his rights were so mobile, but she's actually written 145 different posts we've got on the mobile sector. And she's mentioned 14 of the mobile phone market, brands in the mobile phone market. And we've got a G plus profile and we know more about it. It's the ability to do that at scale and then perhaps filter the 25,000 people down to a much smaller group by by influence, by who they've linked to, by um, what we know about them, their social profiles, and other things. That is that is really really powerful. And we find our ability to find both websites and people um, to be unique in the marketplace, and the scale and the, our ability to do that is, is something that uh, I, I think is very unique. But lists of people are great, and, and we're, we're brilliant at building those lists for people, and uh, our clients are using that a lot. But actually, we also wanted to develop some unique social dimensions to what we do. So I think back in maybe November, December time, we introduced something with the unoriginal title of Circles. And the, the point of Circles was to build, build great another source of great list that we knew was networked together. So you could give LinkedIn 3, 5, 10, 20 Twitter IDs. And from that, we would come back and analyze, after analyzing those, and go, actually, the 250 other people or Twitter profiles that we think you should take a look at are these. And the feedback from the people using these, based on based on the what we call the seed circle, is that the 250 suggestions are just extraordinary. Um, it does depend on how good and how close your seed circle is. So people you know to be influential, it makes a good seed circle, and the suggestions come from that. And that can be a very iterative process. So you can you can see the circle with five. We could show you 250. You might take 20 out of the 250 or more. You know, you can actually take probably lots of that 250, put them back in the seed circle, and repeat the process of this suggesting 
sort of toing and froing, and you get so you get to build brilliant media lists. But that's not just Twitter. We've actually overlaid authorship inside that data. So where we where we might have used Twitter extensively to find the network, we're actually finding the web. You know, more than the the websites associated with those profiles are more than the websites just displayed on their Twitter ID. It's other things, like they might publish across three websites. This might be their G Plus profile. This might be their LinkedIn profile. So we're extensively profiling those people. So what you end up with is this circle of people that are influencers and authors, and you you then at a sort of a point where actually that that would be really good. I can I can go about a, developing a strategy that says how am I going to influence these people? How am I going to get my ideas to resonate with them? But beyond having a list of people, you actually want to also see who are the most important ones in here. So if this is a network or a list of people I should be working with, who are the important ones? And that was a really that's a so that's sort of the natural evolution and and is something that we do. But actually, there was more to networks and there's more to how we become really scientific and 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 targeted about how we how we approach people. And I've done a lot of reading through books like Grouped and and uh, the Business of Influence and lots of other sort of network social books that everybody should read. And what I found is. Social science tells us that we should really talk to the people who are closest to us, as well as just influential. So the the product launch that we're taking to um, SMX uh, West next week is where we start to build on these circles and start to create visualizations. So what Linkdex is doing is going well. If that was the if that was the circle that I, I'm targeting, who am I? So that would be that would be represented, say, as a as, as a blue icon, and then we go, oh, oh, where are my competitors in this network? And we might we might call them red. And because Linkdex holds a contact book, if you've uploaded your your 200 contacts in the mobile sector, for example, we'd go, well, your 200 contacts are them there. And well, what about your contacts contacts? Wouldn't it be cool to get introductions via them? So actually, then you then you actually stop targeting. Everybody like you've never heard of them before. You start targeting people who are connected to people you know, where you know who they influence and who they could be influenced by. And the belief in sort of how that could look is is this. This is kind of a, a visualization taken off the platform that we're taking to SMX, where we're starting to allow people in three dimensions to explore networks, to see how they relate to a network, to see who they want to be targeting, to see who the, where their con who their contacts know. And we actually think this shapes and changes your decisions about how you approach outreach. So if I, to describe what I think we're doing is we're allowing people to pinpoint the websites that you're most likely to resonate with and influence. And we're becoming more scientific about how we do that. And therefore, that sort of natural evolution of that is we become more effective. In other words, we're connecting people with content and, and ultimately content with value. And when sort of closing that loop is we're going to become really quite obsessed with when these people shared or when these people wrote about this in the way that I wanted because I've influenced them did performance increase so tracking and annotating what people have done and what the output of that is something that uh, we, we care a lot about so that's that's sort of a, a sort of a, a short run through of what I think sort of the key DNA of our business is so you can sort of understand where we're coming from it's very integrated. As I said, we're going to be all over the place, um, hitting the hitting the skies a lot. Uh, going to be at SMX West, going to be in Iceland, going to be in New York, PubCon, to name but a few. That's just the first half of this year. So we'd we'd love to show you more, and also our sales guys um, would happily show you around the platform too, and we could even set up some data for you. So uh, I hope that helped give you a flavour for what LinkedIn is is all about. Thank you, uh, Matt. Um, I'm keeping the screen on, uh, on on your side for 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 now. Um, uh, I've, I've got a couple of questions myself. I'm also going to um, ask uh, people who are in uh, the webinar at the moment, uh, the attendees, if they have a question, they can uh, type that into the chat. Uh, there's also a question module actually uh, on the right hand side. I think if people uh, have the right uh, view of um, uh, of GoToWebinar. Um, uh, so, and they can drop the question there, and uh, I can try to either unmute them to ask the questions themselves, or I will ask the question for them um, uh, either way. Uh, I'm going to start off with a question myself. You obviously um, have something quite revolutionary here when it comes to um, influence. 
And uh, that's something, as you said, people have been talking about for the past year or so. And they've been looking at influence. And, and in one of your last slides, uh, you, measured, uh, you, you mentioned measuring influence. Yeah. Um, uh, this is something that you, you're going to be doing in, in uh, uh, you're going to be doing for your clients as well, measuring the influence from from people within industries. So one of the key sort of aspects of influence is you've only you've only influenced if somebody has changed their behaviour. So it's okay to have a list of people that you want to talk to or build links with or or retweet what you've done or share in, in any way but actually unless they unless you've achieved your objective which for for us is is normally rankings have improved traffic improved conversion improved um, direct traffic from social shares increased which ended up in revenue if you if, if you if we believe that those are the objectives influence only really happened if those were affected by our by by what we've done and I think um, I think we often use the wrong definition of influence and whether someone is influential etc it's kind of um, lost in actually they're only actually influential if you've achieved your objective and and actually that behavior has actually resulted in, in, in the benefit that you set out as as the objective um, so there there are people out there who, who believe that um, number of retweets number of likes uh, number of shares stuff like that is a measurement of influence you, you are doing it differently right so um once again, I, th I think um, I think all those are great metrics. Uh, I think if we if we stop focusing on what uh, what we know or, or focus on what we know to be intrinsically true, that if you're really passionate about a subject, um, then the chances are that you know, like me, if you're passionate about search and social and all the things that we care about, so are our friends. And that's the same with any sector. If you can find people who are really passionate about a topic more than their clout score or some pseudo influence score. That will translate into they will share, they will share their ideas um, and the chances are that, that the people they know will share those ideas too because we, we all share similar interests and, and we all know that to be sort of part of the sort of fundamental makeup of human na nature and networks and I think LinkedIn is is more in tune with how people really work as opposed to creating pseudo scores so that's for example we will find the passionate and influential people. We do bring in things like cloud too. Don't get me wrong, but we also care about how how um, what people think about topics, how how much they write about topics, how much they how how engaged they are. Um, do they write about one of a market? So if a market was defined by fifteen mobile phone companies, for example, and they only ever write about one of them, then that tells us quite a lot. And actually, half of the authors we find only write about one. If they write about all of them, and as I showed in the example, they've, they've written one hundred and fifty times about lots of them and actually that person really really cares about mobile and it's that passion that we think is alongside influence that really matters so um, can, can you do this for every uh, uh, every industry yeah absolutely and I think that's um, that's something we, we were we didn't know when we started this this process which is how how granular and how how many niches or could we actually cover off with, with the core methodology that we use for this data? And actually, the reality is, no matter how how niche it is, we do an amazing job. So, for example, um, one client looked at the the business end of Wi-Fi. So this is this is not mobile, where where traditional sort of data companies would have said, well, you need more people in the mobile sector. We said, actually, we need people who care about sort of big Wi-Fi systems in hotels. Um, and all the sort of trade press around all of that and actually what we were able to do is profile all of the authors that write about that kind of real B2B interesting niche but not particularly well characterized by anyone else and we were actually to profile that industry to the point where the, the account managers on that said that, that's, that's amazing how long did that take you and the idea that only took us you know, a few hours where they spent maybe weeks or months curating these people um, is an interesting part of what we do. Uh, I think it does work for very broad categories incredibly well, and I think it works for very niche ones too. Um, but you do need to have the right inputs in the first place. But if, if you know how, if you know what the inputs are into our system, um, the data that comes out the other end, uh, I'm told, is 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 amazing given the um, sort of 
the benchmark against what people maybe have spent many weeks curating. Um, a related question from uh, uh, one of the people in the chat room, Sarah Bradley, is uh, which social networks uh, does social influence data, uh, your social influence data come from? Is it Twitter, Google Plus, LinkedIn? What, what, what networks are you looking at? So um, it's very, tw so in terms of um, the social networks, Twitter it drives circles. That is, that is certainly true. In terms of author, we are attaching next to an author profile G+, Facebook, um, LinkedIn, and, and Twitter, and we're extending that list too. So what we're really looking to do is, is really characterize individuals um, in our databases by not only just what social networks they take part in, um, all of the metrics, they might, what domains they publish across, how often they publish, what they write about, amongst other and other sort of core bits of DNA. Um, but the the circle uh, profiling of networks um, is is very Twitter dominant. Very Twitter dominant. Okay. Um, okay. So um, going over to uh, your two in general, um, uh, there's a question which is kind of a broad one. Um, no, I'll, I'll, st I'll stick to the, the influence one because there's another question from Nat uh, Porter uh, around in influence and I'll get to the other question uh, later on because that's a more broad question. Um, when conducting research into some industry influencers, how easy is it to break down lists of influencers for a broad industry like, for example, fashion? Um so the filters that are currently available if so in so I, i've done a project in, with fashion and so we could we could certainly find ten thousand plus authors that they could then filter those down by the quality of the domain that they publish on and that might take it down to you know one thousand fifteen hundred whatever i could then filter that by the ones that know about your so if you have a client or whether you are a brand i could go which ones of these have not written about you yet or the ones that have written about you yet I could filter that down I could then go well how many of can I find the ones that have written about maybe six of 20 companies in this market so actually they write about fashion a lot and they've got a broad coverage of, of the fashion industry and I could bring this down all the time you and have, you know kind of have the ones that have, have a G plus profile because authors with a G plus profile are I think will influence the SERPs. So I can I can actually compress what are often tens of thousands of people into very small groups quite quickly, um, using using all kinds of um, metrics and filters and sorts. Now, of course, you you were experienced with this. You build it, so it doesn't take you too long. How long would it take somebody who was just starting out? So circles is really interest is a really easy concept. So give me under ten people that you know to be influential in a market. So, um, and I'll spit you 250 out the other end. That works really well, and that works really well with author. The author is, is, is slightly more complicated because you have to define the market um, by the domains that play in that market. So we use the concept of world's best author. So the, the inputs for, for author that make this data really sizzle are if, if you were to meet the world's best author for, for example, UK mobile phones, which are the companies you would have expected them to have written about? And to the point where if they hadn't written about them, you would be surprised. And it's, the, it's, the, it's, that, it's that methodology and those domains that, that define that market using that criteria that help us drive amazing lists. If you were to only put two or three companies in when actually the market is characterized by 20 different brands, then actually the data becomes becomes uh, less strong. Um, so putting the right companies in at the top helps drive a lot of the quality of the authors out the other end because we don't just look at individual domains, we're looking at whole markets. So you have to really characterize that market in some way and we use the sort of a collection of domains to do that. And the world's best author concept is one that people understand. Would you say that uh, for agencies who work for different uh, industries, um, they, they will probably already do some research. This will make it easier for them. It depends on, on whether you're you're trying to do outreach or not, and how you're doing that, and what strategies you're you're geared up to do. So I think the world's seen a big shift in in how we how we approach um, link building and and social and all of these things in the last sort of six months. And I think developing relationships with people is a big deal. So. Um, if I was to find 200 people that I actually want to go meet, maybe have coffee with, they're, they're important bloggers for reasons X, Y, Z, I'm going to help them teach them about 
G plus a bit so they can help me. I'm going to sort of talk to them about my clients. I'm going to get them involved in campaigns. That seems that kind of chat is what I'm hearing a lot of. That's where agencies and brands are moving to. So we're very much a PR based model. If finding that important group, whether they're hundreds or even you know smaller numbers of people that, that actually beyond the fact that I'm going to email them, I'm actually going to develop a relationship with them. And I think relationship building is a, is a is a big deal now. Um, we're, we're very, very good at that, and we're very good at sort of whether that's the top level media um, in the industry or whether that's the individuals in that industry. We're very good at finding those people. Okay. Uh, another question uh, related to this, I'm, I'm not exactly 100% um, sure what she means, and if we don't get uh, can get to it, we'll ask her to unmute or we're going to unmute her. But uh, the question is from Saskia Fakada. Uh, who asks uh, which or what kind of authors are successfully on LinkedIn right now? Can you give us an example of best practice? I'm not sure I fully understand the question. So authors are uh, we we mine for authors um, at request um, based on a, a client having a, a project. So each each project they set up, we can we can scour the web uh, for authors in that sector. Um, Okay, I'm gonna uh, unmute Saskia if she uh, if she doesn't mind, and then she can ask her the question herself. If she, if she can explain what she means. So I'm just unmuting Saskia now. Hi, Saskia, can you hear us? Yeah. Hello, can you Saskia. Hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, you can ask questions oh, okay. to, to Matt yourself. Hi, yeah, Saskia. Um, hi. Uh, it's a, it sounds quite interesting, but. I'm sorry, I can't really hear uh, all the things that Matt Roberts are say, is saying. So maybe I've, I've lost uh, you uh, anywhere on the track. Um, but I was curious, can you give us a, an example of authors who are using this LinkedIn at this moment? So we, authors don't use it. Agencies and brands use it to find the people in their industry who are writing and sharing uh, their content that they, they want to develop. Whether that's links or or PR based relationships with, so um, lots of the big brands and agencies around the world are using this as a as a cornerstone of their outreach. Does that make sense? Can you give us some examples of brands that are using it? So um, the ones that we have permission to share are people like uh, Money Supermarket, um, Salesforce.com, people like that. Those are the big brands. So big brands, but also medium size and small. We have a range of customers. Okay. okay. So, so in short, Saskia, um, the authors just have to write their stuff, and then Linkdex will uh, find them for the agencies who want to find the authors. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. My inspiration. Okay. Yeah, no problem. So um, that was uh, Saskia. Thank you for the question, Saskia. Really a good one. Um, I'm gonna ask a, like the general question uh, one: What's coming next for the Linkdex platform? Uh, you've already mentioned actually the, the what well, the next part is influence. Uh, I think I guess James Finlayson, who asks the question, wants to know what's what's after that. So I think I think we've sort of hinted a lot at what we're doing next, which is obviously um, better visualizations of data. So um, I think this has always been great at creating lists. So um, and I think um, to understand to understand social networks and how authors interact, you have to understand you have to be able to visualize the network. And I think um, visualizing networks um, from all of the work we're doing currently in the company. Adds a level of precision and understanding to not just who are the players in the market, but why am I talking to you? Why am I talk, taking you to lunch? Why am I not taking you? Uh, it's just a it's another step change in how we look at data. Is 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 really where we're going, and then sort of continuing that sort of journey of of what we call content 360, telling you more about content and how performance changes through time. So as people share. Um, things socially and via links against the specific pages or groups of pages. How what is, what impact is that having on on value um, and bringing out sort of more more complete performance metrics around pages is is, is a big deal. Um, and just generally visualizing data in more interesting ways. I think you know Linkdex is is a fabulous data platform, but I think um, we certainly know that sometimes. In the case of networks, is a good example that uh, it, sometimes visuals allow you to interrogate that data, or I need to understand that data 
in more interesting ways, and you do need those extra dimensions. So I think increasingly becoming visual, um, increasingly look at how networks function to make to make outreach more scientific and precise. And I think um, being better at uh, and developing uh, more expansive and integrated content metrics. Okay. Um, uh, the um, uh, you, you mentioned something that you launched uh, that was actually last summer already. Geo ranking data, which is ranking based on where uh, well, on, on specific locations, uh, which can differ as as any SEO will know from one place to another. Um, that kind of gets me to the question: Is there a future for ranking? Because there's a lot of talk about tools and 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 ranking tools and and uh, Google doing stuff and tools not doing ranking anymore. What is your vision on that? So um, we're we're client driven in many ways as a company, and um, if we were to pull r ranking data out of our platform tomorrow, then they would they would not be happy. Our agencies and brands use ranking data. We understand the limitations of it. And we understand that one of those was was the location of the searcher for some search queries altered the results dramatically. That's why introducing geo ranking data was worth the investment. We understand personalization, we understand device, and, and amongst others. And where possible, we will extend that functionality to to cover those off. I think it's not necessarily always about having a getting it right 100% for 100% of the time, but actually getting a feel for where, how you perform, um, but also taking into account that there are other important metrics like uh, traffic conversion and shares and referring traffic. These are all important metrics too, but rankings not going to go away. Um, rankings exist and, and having them as part of the mix um, to drive things like search visibility while, the, while being aware and, and sympathetic to, to other harder metrics like the ones that analytics provides is, is still really important. That may change through time, but I can't see that changing anytime soon. And I can't see search people this year or at least next not really wanting to build um, ranking data into how they report or at least how they, they get to understand or characterize um, to markets and their position in the market, their visibility. Okay. Um, a little bit in general about ThinkDex. Uh, what is the type of audience that should be looking at your tool? So I think um, I think if you are into search or into content, um, particularly if you're becoming more integrated about how you look at it. So whether you're sort of you're upping your ability to generate content and market content in a in a in a slightly more evolved way than perhaps search was done sort of 18 months ago. If, that, if your recruitment profile is is more around writers and PR people as opposed to just technical search people, then we're an interesting platform for you. Um, we think we complement your other bits of toolkit as well as being very comprehensive in our, our own. So I don't think necessarily in all instances we're a swap all the tools you've got and replace it with us, although we do have a very broad um, coverage of functionality. But you know, we can't replace every tool all the time. But I think if if data, if having sort of a, a core cornerstone of technology that you can build lots of sort of um, activities around in a very integrated way is, is how you'd like to move forward and exploit the efficiencies of that. And if, if higher quality outreach and, and all of those sort of um, uh, new ways of going about how we do search, social and PR are, are how you're thinking, then this is an interesting platform to check out. Okay. Do 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 you need to be rich to use Lingdex, or is it the tool no, for everyone? Actually, I, I think that's. I think I think um, it's it's a it's a, for for the data processing we do. It's an incredibly reasonable platform. I certainly know of vastly more expensive platforms than we have, but at the same time, we I think we provide amazing value. Um, so I think I think typically people are, are pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Uh, it's always a difficult question for, for to, to, to talk about competitors, uh, and I'm not asking you to judge competitors, but uh, for the readers of Status Search or the, those listening and viewing, um, if they are looking to uh, get into new tools, uh, what kind of tools are comparable to Lingdex? So in what terms should they look at uh, when they're looking at competitors? Where, where should they also consider Lingdex? 
I think that's, I think it's a good question. I think we get asked this all the time, and I think two and a half years ago we'd have how are you compared to Moz or how are you compared to Raven. That's kind of gone away now. Um, we now get the how are you compared to the Bright Edges and Cavarios way more, but even that we kind of although we're, it's it's flattering and they've been in the market a long time and I'm sure they're great platforms. We're, we're kind of we 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 do what our users want the data to do, and we also extend where the where the market is heading, and where we actually think we're very comfortable with manipulating big data in a, in a really interesting way. And I actually think we're as this year goes on, and I think you, hopefully you would have seen it by some of the things that we're doing, is the the te the, the desire to compare us is going you know, is is subsiding because um, it's it's becoming more and more obvious that actually we're a slightly different flavor of of, of technology. That does that does more than than you know sort of the standard search features. We are we are a very integrated platform with with very unique data sources that you actually can't get anywhere else. Um, so you might even use one of those competitors and use Linkdex by its side. Actually, because actually the data sources are so, although there is a little bit of overlap, we are sufficiently different now. Okay, um, how, if somebody is your client. Um, get, do they do they get assigned uh, special account managers or is it uh, plug and play and go? Yeah, so we have a we have a, a US team and a, and a London based team, um, both with both sales and account management uh, to help people along. And I think that's the that's the important thing about SaaS platforms is it's it's really important that you have human contact, whether that's just, that's for training face to face as well as online training, or whether that's um, helping people exploit the technology to its fullest, just uh, giving people a login and hoping they, they they get on with it well is 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 probably not what different or differentiates a SaaS platform and, and the way it, you should actually consume it. I think having having quality FaceTime is something that LinkedIn prides itself in a lot. Um, so I spend a lot of time, for example, wherever possible, traveling around to see not just the sort of senior teams who have bought the tool, but actually the, the junior people driving it every day. Just to work out what we can do in the future that's going to really help um, help our users and our account managers do the same. So you know, what would you like to see in the future? What are you what are you enjoying? What are you what are you not using? And is that because you're not aware of it, or because it's not doing what we thought it would do? And and there are many instances where you can have high quality conversations, but you do but you do need strong and deep and high quality account managers to have all of those. Interesting and good conversations, and I think that's uh, uh, something that we are very, very proud of. Okay, and does it matter where people are located? So you mentioned US and UK. Is that your main target, or do you work across the world? So the two time zones there provide us good coverage for the world, but we actually so we have clients in Australasia, we have clients, a lot of clients in the US, we have clients in the UK, uh, France, Germany, Denmark. Other Scandinavian countries, so we're we're I'd say we're a global platform now. I mean, obviously, we're, our, our heritage is is UK, but we're we're certainly very global. Okay. Um, finally, last question: How can they find you? So, um, Linkdex.com is is a good place to start. You can you can get to see the platform via other account sales team there. Um, we can set up demos um, with data that means something to you. So I think that's the thing about demos: seeing a generic set for a different market that means nothing to you is not as interesting as seeing your market. Um, so we can we can often do that for people. Um, we're also going to we we spend a lot of time and a lot of lot of air miles get uh, get created through through travel. So we're at most of the SESs and SMXs and PubCons and IONS and Brighton searches and. Wherever possible, we, we we get about the place so we can actually put the technology into people's hands. So if you are going to one of those conferences, we'd love to see you. Okay, thank you very much. I don't think there's any questions left from uh, the people who are attending. Um, we will be uh, publishing this exact demo again and the conversation we had afterwards on uh, the website, and I will uh, also write down some of the stuff we did we talked about. Um, as said, if you want to get in touch with Lingdex, go to lingdex.com, um, and uh, we'll also have all the stuff on, on State of Search. So Matt, a last word to you. Do you have anything uh, you want to give uh, uh, as a message away to the people uh, listening? Yeah, just 
come come and see us at one of those conferences, and uh, we'd love to show you the, the platform. We're, we're very proud of it. It's developing fast, and if you haven't seen LinkedIn, even sort of if you saw it six months ago but haven't checked it out recently, come and take a look. I think you'll be surprised. Um, it's a, it's it's come a long way, and I think 2013 is going to be a huge year for us. So uh, come along for the ride. Thank you, uh, Matt Roberts from LinkedIn. This was the very first demo we did on State of Search uh, on uh, the Tools Week. Be sure to catch up on all the other tools uh, in, uh, in the upcoming days as well. Uh, uh, check them out on the website, stateofsearch.com slash tools. You can find out everything about tools uh, around search and uh, SEO. So thank you, and uh, we'll talk soon. This video is part of the State of Search Tools Week. You can find more videos on stateofsearch.com slash tools, demos and presentations of tools like search metrics, link research tools, analytics SEO, Majestic SEO, and LinkedIn.